All right, uh, teardown and review time. This is the Astro AI AM33D. It's an entry-level multimeter uh, targeted at beginners. It's priced quite competitively. It's a manual unit. There's uh, no auto ranging on it. We will take a review on the operation of the unit uh, with an eye towards somebody who might be looking for their first multimeter. And uh, the latter part of the video, I'll tear the unit down right into the silicon level. We'll take a look at all the components uh, and how it's built. Okay, well, it's called a multimeter because it measures multiple functions. Um, there is a range here for measuring volts, uh, DC volts, uh, the, the 2 volt range, 20 volt range, ideal for things like Arduinos. 20 volt range, obviously, for things like 12 volts in a car's automotive system. Measuring resistance from uh, the diode here uh, to see if a diode is functioning correctly, all the way from the 200 ohm range to the 20 mega ohm range. Pretty awesome. There is uh, three ranges here for uh, measuring if a battery it is okay, a 1.5 volt battery, 9 volt and 12 volt. Pretty common, obviously. Uh, some current ranges, uh, two on these prongs, one's 200 microamps, one's 200 milliamps. Then if you want to measure pretty significant currents like you find in a car, uh, you have to use the 10 amp uh, jack over here. And then there's a couple of uh, AC voltage ranges. Uh, 200 volts ideal if you're uh, in North America and have a 120 volt system. Otherwise you're in the 600 volt range if you're in Europe or uh, parts of Asia with a 240 uh, volt range. Very typical. This button here turns on a black backlight, which is super helpful if you're ever doing uh, work in a car or a boat and you need to have poor light conditions, you can see what's going on. The other button here is called hold. Again, if you're trying to do a blind measurement where you can't quite see the display, you can get the measurement and you can press the hold button and then actually take a look at the display. Um, all pretty typical features of multimeter. Uh, this is a very representative uh, uh, standard meter. It has all the typical things you would expect on a multimeter. Nothing really missing here. Okay, let's talk about um, how you measure voltage with a manual meter. Um, generally speaking, you want to probably start on the highest range. Now, I'll just instead of pictures, and so I know the voltage that uh, it's being put into the meter, it's uh, 5.11 volts. Now, you can see in the 600 volt range, it indeed says 5, but of course the digits here are missing. That's why I then uh, uh, go down to the next range, 5.0, and then uh, 5.06. So. Um, and then if you go one further, it's going to say OL, which is overload. Um, so, nice thing with a manual meter, actually, you have to sort of think about what you're doing, which actually can be an advantage, quite frankly, uh, rather than these uh, automatic meters. Um, so, always start high, and then come down until you can see the voltage with all of the uh, resolution, uh, maximum resolution, and uh, that's what we're at here. So. Um, and that's true for all the other ranges. That's how you measure resistance and uh, AC voltage and uh, current. Uh, always start at the higher range and then come down until you know what the voltage is. If you start down here, of course, it'll just be overload. Uh, or worse, you'll get a, a misleading voltage. Now I'm on a 200 uh, millivolt range. Uh, unfortunately, it's just suggesting a very strange uh, voltage, which is not true. Um, now it's overload at 2 volts and then at uh, 20 volts. Uh, you get the actual measurement. So start high, crawl down until you get to the point where the next range down wouldn't have enough uh, uh, range, like a 0 to 2 volts clear doesn't have enough range. Okay, so there's a settings here for measuring batteries, uh, 1.5, 9, and 12 volt. But of course there's also a DC volt scale here. You might wonder what the difference is because obviously batteries are uh, DC elements. This battery here, AAA, it is uh, fully discharged, but if I measure it on the DC voltage range, you can see the meter declares is about 1.02 volts in the battery. But if I switch over to the battery measurement range at 1.5 volts, I'll get a different measurement. Now it declares at about 0.8 volts. Uh, what happens is basically this is a DC volt meter with a bit of resistance added, which gives you a more accurate reading of a, a battery. Over here it's a very high impedance, um, so the battery actually can produce a bit of voltage, but at very, very low currents. Once you switch over to here, you get a more accurate reading of the battery's uh, capabilities and status. Uh, of course, 0.8 volts is, is a discharged battery, and that's the big difference. Uh, and it's actually fairly easy to prove. I've got another meter here in its uh, ohm meter setting. Meter's on 1.5 volts. If I measure the resistance uh, between the terminals, uh, my meter will now declare that to be uh, about uh, 30, 32 ohms. And if I switch back to the 2 volt setting, the meter now will declare a very high impedance uh, around uh, 10 mega ohms. So basically, this is a DC measurement with a small resistor in place to, to load the cell down to give more accurate reading. 
So it's declared to be a 2,000 count meter. You might see that on the literature for multimeters. Let's uh, take a look what that means and uh, what the trade-off of a having a lower count is compared to more expensive meters. So this is declared to be a 2,000 count meter. That's actually a low number. If you look at a more expensive meter, 6,000 and 10,000 count meters certainly do exist. It's basically an indication of resolution. The scales on here, if you notice, are all in the twos, 200 millivolts, uh, 2 volts, 20 volts, and so on. You can see that I'm in the 2 volt range. I'm feeding it almost uh, 2 volts. 1.985 uh, volts is being measured by the meter. This digit here uh, is very much the highest resolution the meter is capable of the millivolt range. If I go slightly above 2 volts, the meter, of course, will go into an overload condition because it can't display anything beyond 2 volts. And, of course, the easy solution to that is you switch to the 20 volt range. But now you can see you've lost that extra digit of resolution. So if this was a, uh, a 6,000 count meter, for example, it would be able to still display that bit of resolution. It's a bit academic, to be honest, uh, in a meter in this class. But uh, if you're wondering what the 2,000 count means, that's uh, basically an indication of how much resolution you can get on each scale and uh, at what point does the resolution become not possible. So with an inexpensive meter, the question of course becomes, is it any good in terms of accuracy? Uh, the reality is, is when we touch the part, we're going to find an integrated circuit which is responsible for most of the accuracy in a multimeter. That's been true for about 40 years now. It's actually kind of hard to buy an inaccurate meter, um, although I'm sure they do exist. If I turn on this uh, reference uh, standard here, this produces an exact 5 volts. Uh, you can see it's reading quite close, 4.95, um, which is in its uh, within its uh, tolerance that it's advertising. So the voltage on just one point, it looks good. Um, not too much of a surprise. Um, the reference standard also does current, but then I'll have to change to the current mode here. Uh, in the current mode, it's a uh, uh, 1 milliamp uh, reference source, and I just connect the leads here. And 1.1, about 10% uh, high, still reasonably accurate. And then the other one is the uh, resistance range. Uh, there is uh, three very precise resistors. The first one's a kilo ohm resistor, and uh, yeah, 1.01 kilo ohms, and that's fine. The next one up is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now, of course, being a manual ranging meter, we now need to go to the next. Uh, that one 10.01, that's exactly what it is. And the other one is a 100 kilo ohm 0.08 resistor, and uh, we'll see the meters relatively accurate. Yeah, it, it's reasonably good. So, um, out of box accuracy of meters these days is uh, fairly reasonable. Uh, within uh, plus or minus 2% uh, two, two isn't too hard to get. So, um, if you're worried about accuracy, um, even inexpensive meters, uh, I've rarely caught one that's really bad. Um, in the old, old, old days when the uh, there was no integrated circuit with all of its sophistication, uh, it was quite possible to get a terrible meter. Um, but these days, um, fairly accurate meters are inexpensive as well. All right, let's talk about the high current range. I'm speaking a bit uh, louder because I got next to the uh, meter a, a fairly noisy power supply, but it is capable of producing 10 amps. Uh, you can see I've now moved the hot lead to the 10 amp jack and I've connected to a, a power supply and at the moment it's supplying about uh, 1.6 amps. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because the leads that come with the meter seem a bit thin so why don't we just see if they can actually handle the current that's theoretically allowed um, and I suspect it's not going to be particularly good. Uh, up to 5 amps, 6 amps, great. 8 amps. Now I'm going to be a bit careful because I don't want to blow the fuse inside the meter. Um, I'll just crank it up to the point where it hits its maximum range, which is uh, 10 amps, I believe. Alright, there we are. Now, actually, the meter is starting to warm me. Here, you hear the beeping sound because it's not very happy. It's at the very edge of its range. Um, the reason it's beeping is because when you start pushing high currents through uh, wires, of course, they can melt very nice. And also, it's warning you because your fuse is about to, uh, to blow. Um, actually, it's working okay. The leads are getting fairly warm, uh, just as a warning, you know, when you get into those higher currents. But um, it seems to be handling it okay. Um, and, of course, you can see the meter is doing its uh, 10 amp. So, um, uh, much to my surprise. I've had a few inexpensive meters I bought over the years where the, the leads truly <laughs> they actually start to melt. These aren't great, by the way. The leads are quite thin. If you're measuring big currents, this is probably not quite the right gauge for it. But um, 
at least for a short measurement period this is uh, holding in there. You can see it's drifting down because actually everything is starting to heat up. The, the leads are actually starting to become more resistive. You, you can feel heat and, and loss of energy through them. So they're not particularly good for very high currents. Um, and that's not a surprise. Let me just uh, turn this meter off. Uh, sorry, let me turn the power supply off. Very noisy. Um, so if you are measuring high currents with this meter uh, up to the 10 amp range, these leads start to become a problem because they actually become... Uh, resistive and uh, they result in some inaccurate measurements because you're losing a lot of energy through the leads. Uh, back construction is pretty good. Uh, you can uh, take off the cover here to access the batteries without removing further, uh, which is great because you generally don't want to open up a meter. Now we're going to do that because of course we want to tear it down. There is a, a nice uh, rubber uh, bumper around the meter so when you drop it it has some chance of surviving which is again another nice feature. Once you peel that off though, you can uh, actually then crack the meter open. Uh, you got to remove uh, three screws. Uh, you generally don't want to do this because you can actually affect the accuracy of a meter once you start cracking it open, but uh, since we're going to be doing a destructive analysis, uh, let's uh, take a look at what we can see on, on this side of the assembly. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the uh, parts that are on a typical uh, meter. Uh, the first thing you can see is that there is a connector for the barrel jacks so and they come down and you can see the plastic here is designed to take the strain of the lead as it bends back and forth and then it comes onto the solder pad. It's a good design because uh, you don't want stress onto these joints here because they can crack. Uh, these two white components, the ones that do get replaced by the user, this is the 10 amp fuse and this is the milliamp fuse. Um, if you put too much current into a range, the fuse, of course, is designed to, to go first so the meter doesn't get damaged. And uh, you can find these uh, easily. It's an Amazon meter, and Amazon listing shows the size of the fuses. You can buy a small bag of them as well, especially for getting started in electronics. Uh, it's really easy to blow the fuses. Uh, don't feel bad. Just pop the meter open and uh, uh, replace them. Uh, the parts down here, this is a precision resistor. Uh, when you're measuring current, basically, it just... Uh, go through the resistor to create a voltage and then that voltage then gets translated into a current. Um, there's going to be some diodes here, same thing with the AC ranges, it's converted to a DC voltage and then fed into the uh, integrated circuit. Um, the actual, the, oh, here's the buzzer. Um, in the uh, continuity mode the buzzer will beep and then as you heard there when we were going above the current limits of the meter it started to warn you with a beeping sound that you had almost exceeded the capabilities of the meter so that's kind of what that does. Um, here's the, the the real heart of any multimeter. It's under this uh, black blob, it's epoxy. The amount of silicon die directly onto the circuit board, wire bond it and then put some uh, uh, epoxy on top of it to protect it. Um, basically all the accuracy of the meter is really inside this integrated circuit. Well, not quite. This resistor is a precision resistor, but uh, the reality is that the vast majority of the meter's uh, accuracy and resolution is determined by this integrated circuit. Uh, there's going to probably be uh, a yeah, probably a voltage regulator here. This is the connection uh, for the battery. And uh, then just a smattering of components usually for some of the display. Let's uh, take off this integrated circuit. Uh, we'll we'll take this one down. We'll see, take a look at what a typical uh, DMM has for an integrated circuit. This header here, if you're wondering, uh, almost certainly for factory calibration or factory setup. And uh, these little pogo pins here, uh, not pogo pins, pardon me, springs, um, come up to the actually battery holder so it uh, holds the battery. It's going to be a, a two-layer circuit board. The workmanship looks fine on this assembly, by the way. Uh, looks like it's all been nicely placed by machines. So, um, again, even inexpensive multimeters these days uh, are reasonably decent instruments and uh, when you pay more money, yes, you get more accuracy, more resolution, but uh, the basics are almost always there in a even a basic meter. So here's the other side of the circuit board um, as kind of expected, just simply this pattern on the circuit board used to select the various modes and then a fairly complicated looking switch. It obviously moves at a number of positions at once. Um, this is a uh, silver. It's probably a nickel coating. Um, it's not as amazing as you'd find in a more expensive meter. This will probably be hard gold plated and uh, same thing gold plated on the connectors. Uh, the reason why that's useful is that over time of course this will slowly wear down and eventually the meter will malfunction if you spin it too much. So uh, again, always trade-offs with, with uh, time and money. Um, 
this won't last as long as a more expensive meter, but then again, yeah, it is an entry level meter. Uh, the display held on by what's known as a zebra strip uh, that comes down and contacts uh, the assembly. And then of course here is the uh, LED backlight pattern. And uh, very typical of a uh, entry level meter on this side. In terms of safety regulations, uh, in terms of meeting a national standard like UL, CSA, uh, TUV, there, there's nothing here. Uh, the meter is, doesn't claim to have, meet any national standard. If that's of a concern, uh, this wouldn't be the meter for you. Um, it is an inexpensive uh, Chinese meter. They don't even claim anything like um, ESCE marking, actually. I can't find anything even in the manual on that. So, uh, no, no declared uh, national standards for safety. Okay, so what we have here is a picture of the silicon die uh, it starts to expose all of its secrets. Uh, what are we looking at? Well, uh, the bits on the outside that are uh, little squares are the connections off the die. They're known as the connection pads. As you can see they are on the edges of the die, as typical as a wire bond. Uh, on the uh, center here, we have a very regular array almost certainly some sort of ROM. Uh, so we can have probably a microprocessor design, uh, not too surprising. Uh, the bits around here uh, are basically digital logic gates that have been uh, laid out by a, a CAD tool. Um, I would suspect this is an 8-bit or perhaps 4-bit microprocessor and assorted logic. On the uh, left-hand side, a lot of analog functions you kind of would expect uh, we'd have to find something like a voltage reference and an A to D uh, converter. Now, no need to super guess because fortunately there is a, uh, the next picture is the die on the upper uh, right corner uh, has the maker of the die, SDIC, a company out of uh, China, uh, and a part number uh, ICO810M or IC0810M. Um, and a, a relatively recent date, uh, design date of 2021. So we're looking at a fairly contemporary device. Um, and if you go onto their website, you can see uh, their top page, uh, the professional mixed signal IC design application provider. And uh, in there, they actually do show a part for a, a digital multimeter. Uh, it doesn't quite match the silicon die. Um, they actually seem to sell a lot of small microprocessors with an assorted uh, associated analog digital converter. All would be actually kind of uh, appropriate for a um, digital multimeter, uh, but it has the bits you would kind of expect. Um, the 8 bit processor here um, driving out to an LCD, of course, that's the display. Uh, some IO control that'd be suitable for the uh, switching function. A voltage reference here, of course, that provides some, say, uh, standard and then this uh, analog to digital converter. So it's kind of got all the right bits, uh, even uh, you down here, buzzer, of course, we saw that on the board as well. So quite likely that's what we're looking at uh, on this uh, design, uh, an 8-bit microprocessor with some assorted uh, peripherals. I'll probably will take back one thing I said. I said that there's some precision devices on the board. I suspect things like the uh, resistor used for current may not be that precise at all. Nice thing about this kind of design is you can actually uh, post manufacturing calibrate it. Uh, it talks about having uh, an ability to store configuration values in the ROM, uh, which is kind of awesome. So there we go. Uh, looks like a pretty modern uh, microcontroller that's uh, being used to uh, to control this uh, digital multimeter. All right. Well, that was a look at this uh, meter. It's uh, pretty much what you'd expect. I guess one thing I didn't probably mention at the start of the video is the why I selected this meter. It was the best-selling unit on uh, my country's Amazon. In fact, I checked several countries, and it's true. But I can see why. It's fairly sharply priced, and it's got a reasonable selection of capabilities. I mean, yes, you get the standard compromises, no safety regulations, thin lead sets and such, 2,000 counts. But Honestly, a lot of value here in these kind of low-end meters, and certainly you can do a lot of engineering with these uh, before you have to start pushing into something a little more sophisticated. Hope you liked the uh, video. If so, uh, please give it a thumbs up, and uh, on to the next one.